Um, hi, this is Don Thomas. I'm with uh, the Buena Ventura uh, computer chapter. Um, I came across this interesting company a couple of years ago uh, while I was doing some research and uh, I always thought it would be neat to have a system help me grow food since I always seem to forget how to take care of plants and I always end up killing them. Um, anyways, uh, Mark is going to present their farm bot project. Um, we've invited uh, several other IEEE chapters who are also co-sponsoring co this webinar. I think we have the Orange County chapter and robotics, Orange County and robotics chapter, the Santa Clara uh, computer and robotics chapter, and uh, I believe the Boise, Idaho computer chapter as well. Um, I know this went out to also read through for region five and six. So there may be other chapters out there that uh, are also um, uh, saying this out as well. Anyways, um, I'll hand it over to Mark and let you take it from there. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Don, uh, for allowing us to do the presentation. We're very excited about uh, uh, presenting to your group um, and uh, we're interested in uh, broadcasting our message and uh, tell, telling people about our product um, across the United States and around the world. Uh, so let me just get right into it. Uh, FarmBot is an agricultural robotic farming machine which aims to create an open and accessible technology aiding everyone to grow food and to grow food for everyone. Uh, the FarmBot device is a 100% open source device. It is a precision agriculture CNC gardening tool to help you grow vegetables. It, um, in a nutshell, it automates the gardening process and uh, users can copy, edit, modify the open source hardware, software, and they can truly own the technology that uh, we provide. Uh, we are truly an international organization with team members throughout the United States, Canada, and Belgium. And additionally, uh, with our open source uh, FarmBot Forum community, we have fostered a community of 2,000 people. Um, and uh, they are open source contributors from around the world with concentrations uh, between North America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, parts of Asia. And uh, so if you wanna go to the next slide, please. Uh, I, I just want to show uh, with this case study video, uh, how open source it really is. And uh, so the, the Charm project is a project that has taken our FarmBot hardware and modified it to do uh, aquaculture uh, in growing coral. And so um, the, what the FarmBot does, and you'll see in the video, it it, uh, it has automated spray washing uh, coral to remove algae. So go ahead and play the video, please. So I'm, I'm really happy to show that success story and the application of our open source technology. Um, to date, they have grown over 2000 pieces of coral and that coral it has now been transplanted into the ocean uh, off the coast of Australia. Uh, and so we're really happy to see this kind of um, development. Uh, subsequently, there have been other coral uh, growing groups in the United States that have developed similar systems using the, the charm project design. And uh, they're now um, growing pieces of coral for uh, 
uh, coral reefs off the coast of Florida and also uh, in the Caribbean, um, just south of Florida. So we're pretty happy to see that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this slide shows that the FarmBot operating system can be operated either on a laptop, a tablet, or a mobile phone. For the initial setup, we encourage customers to use a laptop or a personal computer to, uh, to run the software and, and uh, do the setup procedure. And then once they uh, graduate from that and they're able to use the FarmBot kind of in a more routine setting, um, we encourage the use of uh, operations to uh, a mobile phone or tablet just because it's easier. Uh, the photo uh, shown here is the farm designer, or, or the, the, the little graphic uh, is the farm designer, and it allows you to design a garden with a video game-like experience. And you can see we have several vegetables arranged in a grid, which represents real vegetables in the garden. Um, next slide, please. So what you see here is a graphic of the main components of the FarmBot system. And uh, the FarmBot is based on 3D printing technology, and it's been modified to do gardening operations. So the FarmBot has four motors, two X-axis motors, and one Y-axis motor, and one Z-axis motor for uh, vertical movement of the tool head. And uh, these motors are what power the movement of the tool in the 3D space above the growing area. Um, like I mentioned before, the FarmBot is 100% open source. And so all our engineering designs, all our CAD models, all the software, all the code is available for free online on our website. And if uh, FarmBot users have specific customizations, that they want to do, they can design their own tools and customize their own software. And they're welcome to use our engineering designs to power their own FarmBot systems and tools. Uh, the FarmBot has a USB camera and it's able to take high definition photos of the growing area. The, the system requires a stable, and level planting area, the FarmBot does not function on a slope. So you can't have it uh, on a hillside or, or whatnot. Um, the system also requires a reliable water source and a stable and reliable internet connection. Uh, FarmBot can operate uh, from a Wi-Fi or ethernet internet connection. Um, if you are planning to use Wi-Fi, we do recommend that you place your Wi-Fi router close to a window or close to a wall that is um, as close to your FarmBot as possible. And if you're not able to use uh, uh, or re relocate your router, that you should um, use a Wi-Fi range extender or a Wi-Fi signal booster to, to do that. And, and so if you're any more than about uh, 25 to 35 feet away from your router or the, the physical location of the farm bot, if it's any more than 25 to 35 feet away, uh, we suggest using a an Ethernet cable. Um, the, the farm bot Genesis system that you see in this graphic retails for $3,000 US. Uh, and it has dimensions of uh, five feet wide by 10 feet long. And we also have a FarmBot Genesis XL, which is our largest model currently. Um, and that one is 10 feet wide by 20 feet long. And in the California climate, we have uh, several years of operating experience with the FarmBot Genesis XL units. And those uh, units can provide enough vegetables for a family of four, uh, depending upon what you plant in your garden. Um, in the near future, sometime in the next 18 to 24 months, um, we plan to significantly increase the size of our farm bots. And we will offer farm bots up to 
uh, 60 meters in length. And I'm sorry, I don't have that uh, conversion right off the bat, but it's going to be around 120 feet long. Um, and so for those uh, larger farm bots, they will be considerably more expensive and they, they'll have to have more robust components uh, and they will cost in around $20,000. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a system diagram of the FarmBot hardware and electronics, and uh, where you could see how the FarmDuino is connected to the Raspberry Pi on the left-hand side. So the, the FarmDuino is our own customized version of the Arduino microcontroller on the right-hand side. That's the uh, the process control board shown in black um, the motors are at the very top um, and of course we mentioned the x1 x2 y and z axis motors and then um, on the right hand side um, we show the peripherals uh, all the all the peripherals on the right hand hand side are powered by 24 volt DC controls. Uh, and so these peripherals that are 24 volt powered uh, include a vacuum pump, a water solenoid valve, uh, an LED light strip, and then there are two available spare peripherals. Um, so, and th those can be used for whatever you want. Uh, and some people have used the spare peripherals to power little fans and to power uh, additional lighting systems and other uh, temperature controls that may need to be controlled using the FarmBot. Uh, the FarmBot is able to accommodate any plug and play USB camera, um, and it can be set up for other cameras. Uh, if you want to add a specific camera and you have all of the drivers, uh, it is possible to add uh, other cameras, but it's not as simple as just plugging it in using the USB plug and play cameras. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this uh, the next case study uh, shows the FarmBot Digital Twin, and uh, it, it's uh, it's a pretty cool project. Um, and I'll just let uh, I'll let you play the video. section between those very disparate areas and disciplines and say, well, the, the ability to generate a digital simulation of a garden over time would be a really interesting thing for people to engage with, particularly farm bot owners who are looking for interesting ways to use this amazing technology that can provide a, another perspective on the gardening experience. This first iteration, which is the digital twin, which is your garden represented in 3D space on the internet, which would be a nice way for you to talk about your passion of gardening and, and also allow people to explore their passion of farm bots. So four team members on the call today. We have Jessica, we have Fan, we have Watik, and we have Charlie. Hi, my name is Watik Mukesi. My role in the team was to sort of work back end and uh, do all the API communications with farm bot. So I'm Jessica, I'm studying a Bachelor of ICT, majoring in mobile computing. I was in charge of mainly coding the electron application and also, you know, handling the information we get from the FarmBot API and doing stuff with it. I also was in charge of designing the UI and also implementing it. My name's Charlie. I'm doing a Bachelor of uh, Information Systems. My role was to work on the community or the garden view. Hey, my name is Fan. Um, my role in this project is mainly on the database. In the middle, let's say we have a simple JavaScript application that sends commands to the FarmBot via the FarmBot API. So that tells it to, you know, take the numerous thousands of images that it needs. Uh, once those images are done and ready, 
they're downloaded back to our app, and then we send to Meshroom. Meshroom is basically an easy to use photogrammetry computer vision framework. It's free and open source. Photogrammetry is basically the science of making measurements from photographs. It infers the geometry of a scene from a set of unordered photographs or videos. Uh, we get the generated 3D garden model. And then after we got that, we can load it up in Unity as Charlie's display. So the first step for a user would be to get a, scan their garden. You may just want to do a portion of the garden. So you input the parameters of the x-axis and the y-axis, click start scan, and that will basically just send a uh, command to FarmBot. Once the scan is done, you go to manage scan results, and from here you can view the photos. Right now we, we just have a couple photos, it's just for a demo, but in reality you have thousands of images here. You can also view the plant data. So you have the ID, name. This is the part that uses the photogrammetry software. You just hit start 3D garden generation, and then we take this 3D garden, and we can uh, open it up in Unity to see your garden placed inside a representation of the farm bot enclosure, if you like. I had initially thought that we would need to have side-on photos of the plants to get an effective red render, but um, we solved that problem just with top-down photos. I'm very, very happy with the output. It's inspired you guys, and also might inspire other people to find new uses and new ways to interact with the farm bot which I think is an indication that you've done something really interesting and really uh, profound. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we were really happy with to see that development. And uh, it's another example of uh, how our open source software could be used by the school to develop their own uh, software applications and to do their own photogrammetry um, system. Uh, when I first saw it, I was quite amazed and to think that they had thousands of photos to develop that uh, 3D model of their own garden. So um, next slide, please. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I am no idea why this is not advancing. Give me a second here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I will go to around slide seven. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. So uh, what you see here are the main tools of the FarmBot. The photo on the top left is the universal tool mount. This is the mount to which all tools are able to be connected and powered. There are 12 pogo pin connectors at the bottom of that uh, universal tool mount, and they can be configured to operate any 24 volt powered device that could reasonably connect be connected to the farm bot. Starting on the top left uh, is the universal tool mount. Uh, it's the disc shaped item. Uh, the, you, the universal tool mount features 12 gold plated pogo pins for making electrical contacts and to be able to operate sensors or whatever you want to connect to the universal tool mount. The UTM ha also has three fluid ports, one for liquid water for watering your garden, one for vacuum or air uh, so that the cedar tool can pick up seeds and other objects depending upon what you want to pick up it within your garden and then there is also a spare fluid port for a fluid of your choice such as a fertilizer a herbicide or pesticide although we discourage the use of pesticides in uh, in your garden um, we like to keep things as organic and as clean, as fresh as possible. So, um, yeah, uh, looking directly to the right is the cedar tool, the seed injector. Um, this tool works in congestion in conjunction with the vacuum pump to pick up and plant seeds. And looking at the second graphic down on the left hand side, uh, that's the watering tool. It's basically a shower head. And uh, you saw this in operation in the previous video. Uh, next to the watering tool on the right-hand side is the weeder tool. 
And uh, the weeder tool is a rotary powered tool. And it's basically just like a mini weed whacker device. Uh, it, uh, it rips up weeds and it's also able to use a chuck bit uh, for drilling holes and doing other soil operations uh, in your soil. Um, it, it, many of our new customers uh, program the rotary tool to basically mill the top surface of their garden where there are not plants existing or plants that they want to exist um, existing in their garden. So basically it just makes it really difficult for anything besides authorized plants to be able to grow in their garden. Um, and then uh, on the bottom left, that is our boroscope camera. Like I mentioned before, it's a plug and play USB powered camera. Um, and then beside that on the right-hand side is the moisture sensor tool, which is really a conductivity sensor. Uh, the soil sensor is for measuring the moisture content of the soil. And this tool has two probes that stick in the soil and then it, it'll give you a relative measurement. And then um, based on how much uh, moisture there is, it will tell you whether it's dry or not so dry. Uh, and it will give you an indication of whether or not you need to water your plants. Um, because of our open source philosophy, dozens of FarmBot users have been able to develop their own tools specific to their own hardware application. Next slide, please. So these are the two sizes of the FarmBot that we offer. So um, we have the FarmBot Genesis on the left-hand side, that's five feet wide by 10 feet long. And then uh, on the right-hand side is the FarmBot Genesis XL side. Uh, and so this is our uh, largest units uh, currently, and it's 10 feet wide by 20 feet long. And it is possible to increase the length of uh, the Genesis XL. It, it would just be very difficult to increase the length of the width, uh, sorry, the width of the of FarmBot Genesis XL, just because we found that uh, any wider than about 10 feet, you get just a little bit too much deflection and you can run into some reliability problems. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and this is uh, this is our case study from uh, the Netherlands. And so there is a section where uh, the gentleman is speaking Dutch in here, but there are English subtitles. So please go ahead and play the video.
Okay, very good. Yeah, so uh, these uh, students from the Netherlands, they uh, purchased a farm bot and they were able to develop uh, their own hardware and software and they were able to integrate that uh, their, their systems and uh, their software into our system and uh, really put together a pretty cool project where they were able to get their gripper tool to identify plant and then pick it up and harvest it and put it into a harvesting bin, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so go uh, next slide, please. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, it is possible to uh, take our engineering designs and or one of our kits and uh, make the farm bot larger. Um, and like I mentioned before, um, sometime in the next 18 to 24 months, we are going to be having uh, or we're going to be releasing a commercial model that's going to be significantly bigger than our current models um uh and we will be adding uh more reliable more robust hardware which will include uh nema 23 motors currently our stepper motors are nema 17 motors so that the, that's the next size smaller um and in our prototype testing um we've had some pretty good success with the nema 23 motors um, currently, the software uh, is limited to 1,000 plants, um, and uh, if you need to be able to plant more than 1,000 plants, uh, we can offer specialized FarmBot software accounts to be able to plant more than 1,000 plants, um, but there may be uh, a monthly fee or a subscription fee associated with those uh, increased sized uh, accounts. So um, that's that's my point on scalability. And then next slide. Thank you very much. Now, so I'll be happy to take any questions that uh, you might have. Uh, we did have a couple of questions come in. Uh... One uh, mainly for me from uh, from a, I mean, will the recording of the webinar be available later? Uh, yes, it will. Uh, we'll post that in the next uh, couple of days at, at most. And then uh, I mean, also has one for you, Mark. And this might have been partially uh, shown uh, later on, but does the farm bot adjust to the height of the plants? For example, tomato plants are huge compared to most other vegetables. Um, so currently there is a limit of uh, 24 inches from the rails to the, the top of the gantry portion. Um, and we do have folks who are growing tomatoes and what they have done is they have uh, increased the vertical gantry uh, column supports uh, to four feet or five feet, I think, yeah, four feet. So basically they have increased, they, they've, they've doubled the height of the farm bot. Now, what we have uh, found through our operations is that uh, if you're kind of in an open setting, uh, sometimes the wind can affect the operation of the farm bot. And if you get into taller farm bots, um, uh, weather conditions can interfere with the overall reliability. That's why we have it just slightly shorter. Uh, but what we have found is that um, if if you do want to plant taller plants, um, we have uh, the farm bot managing those areas. What you can do is you can put them just on the very sides of the plant, either the, the front side or the back side. And the farm bot will brush up, uh, it'll brush up against the plants, but it won't damage the plants. Uh, and, it, and so if you go to the next slide, um, you go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is an example of farm bot genesis. And then next slide after that. Yeah, uh, this one. And is there one more photo after that? I think so. 
Yes. Okay. So here, uh, this is a Genesis Excel bot. And here you can see uh, uh, Mel. This is uh, Captain Mel's uh, farm bot. She has devised a system where she grows her tall plants, her tall vining plants on the very end. So if you see at the uh, kind of uh, at the end of the rails, uh, there are stalks coming up. Um, uh, can you just highlight those? Uh, are you able to mouse around there? I don't know if you can see my mouse yeah. or not. Yes, yes, I can. So just go to the right a little bit. Uh, just go to the right. Yeah, uh, keep going, keep going. Yeah, and a little bit up. Uh, yeah, right there. So those are the stalks right there. And so it. Uh, she has grown um, vining plants such as persimmons. Uh, she ha also has tomatoes. And there's some peppers there that grow quite tall. And she has managed to uh, just keep them on the ends. And she's had some success growing those tall plants. But uh, it is possible to increase the height of the farm bot. Um, it, it just will require a few extra components to manage those, those taller plants if you do want to have them under the gantry. Uh, what we found is that most of our customers uh they want to grow um they want to get the biggest bang for their buck and so a lot of those plants are greens uh like spinach and kale and broccoli where they all fit underneath the gantry and so so for the models that we offer uh the height limit is 24 inches um, but it is possible to increase the height if you do want to manage polar plants under, under the farm bot. All right. Uh, next question from uh, Todd. Have you thought about partnering with a company that's doing uh, green absorbing solar panels? Yeah, yes. Um, yes. So uh, there, there is a company. Um, be, there, there's actually two companies that we have partnered with that are doing solar panels along with uh, the, the farm bot. Uh, one is based in Germany and the other one is based in Israel. And um, I have uh, some photos of their setup. It's actually pretty cool to see what they've done with the farm bot. Uh, and so what they've done is they have set up their solar panels so that uh, the solar panels are above the soil um, in around the five or six foot mark. And then the farm bot is operating underneath the solar panels. Uh, and so you get kind of the, uh, you get added benefit of uh, having a little bit of shade and uh, keeping the, the soil just a little bit more moist and of course it's a little bit of a wind barrier so there are so many benefits to having solar panels uh along with the farm bot and uh, yeah I, I can provide more information uh if you want to send an email to contact at farm.bot uh i'll be more than happy to uh to uh send more information about solar panels and the use of the farm bot all right. Uh, well, that, that leads into the, the next question. Uh, uh, if you uh, have an email address you can share, I, I know that contact at farm.bot has pretty much goes to you or to a small team. So, yes. Yeah. Right. So, if you just can you go uh, go a few slides back? Yeah. You had it there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's, Sorry, that's our so, so that is our, our email. That will go to me. Um, and we all, we we have that one contact at farmbot.io, and then the other one is contact at farm.bot. But either one will get to me. All right, thanks. Uh, question from Paul: Is the density of plants greater than uh, traditional farming? Uh, currently, it uh, it's it's only a little bit more dense. Um, uh, it, for the larger systems, um, you you don't have to um, have the rows or the walking paths in, in there because the farm bot's able to manage that entire area. 
Um, and so, yes, the, the density is a little bit uh, higher than conventional planting. But it's not it's not like it's not like 10 X or anything like that. It's only like maybe 10 percent or 20 percent more dense uh, because it doesn't have to have the rows. A uh, question from Carl, uh, how much effort it is, excuse me, how much effort is it to clean and maintain the mechanical components, e.g. clear out dust and dirt from the tracks, remove debris, et cetera, from mechanical hinge points, lubricate, specifically maintenance hours per operating hours, for example? Yeah, um, so uh, the maintenance schedule for the FarmBot is, um, it's it's not too demanding. Uh, what we suggest is that every two weeks, uh, you take a damp cloth and you just simply wipe down the tracks. And if there's a considerable amount of dirt, it is possible to just take your uh, spray washer and uh, spray the, the tracks and remove any dirt or dust or debris. Uh, and then once a year, uh, you will have to lubricate the Z-axis lead screw with uh, um, graphite. So there's uh, there's a special graphite spray called uh, Graphite Extreme. You can typically find it at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, and uh, it's a it's a dry graphite spray that goes uh, on the lead screw. And it will provide your lead screw with um, about a year worth of lubrication, and uh, so that 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 is basically it. Um, there are some uh, minor adjustments that will need to be done. So if you're in an area that um, has uh, considerable sunlight, you may need to, or if or if it's really hot, uh, you may need to adjust the tracks because over time. Uh, due to thermal expansion contraction, the tracks can shift and you can get one track that might um, go just a little bit out of alignment. Um, so, uh, you know, that's like five or 10 minutes um, once or twice a month to, to, to do that. Um, but basically that's it. So um, wipe down the tracks and then lubricate the lead screw uh, once a year. Um, and then once every two years, uh, we suggest replacing the GT2 timing belts that are used. So these are rubber belts and just over time they wear out and, um, they're replaced, uh, within about 15 minutes. If, if you want to do the, uh, belt replacement procedure, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to, to do that on all three belted axes. Great. Uh, question from uh, Anish, uh, how waterproof is the farm bot? Uh, can it be out in the open or does it need some sort of covering? No, uh, so the farm bot is weatherproof. Um, and so the farm bot can stand up to heavy rains. Uh, it can stand up to uh, high winds and, uh, it's, uh, it's able to manage any kind of weather. We also have, uh, folks up in Canada that are, uh, that, that keep their farm bot outdoors all year round. Uh, and so it's able to manage cold temperatures as long as you blow out the lines and, uh, ensure that there's no water in the lines before you, um, secure it for uh, winter time, um, but I, I do need to put a caveat in there and say that the farm bot is not flood proof. Uh, and so um, it can stand up to rain, stand up to uh, heavy rains, uh, but uh, it cannot be submerged. So if you submerge the electronics uh, the box, um, it will, uh, it will it won't be able to manage that. It'll it'll short out, and uh, you'll have some problems. Um, but basically, just regular weather, anything outside of a flood, uh, the farm bot can definitely manage that. All right, uh, and a comment I believe from Todd. Uh, that's a huge one for the desert around Israel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. That, uh, yeah. 
and he, he, he uh, goes on, there's, the son is a killer here in California, so it, it can, uh, it's amazing how bad the sun can be with no clouds if you're near the equator. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the market has really opened up for us uh, in Israel uh, over the last uh, several months. Uh, basically, uh, I think they just discovered it uh, in, in, in Israel uh, because over the last uh, three months, we've probably sold uh, like 15 units to Israel. And we keep on getting more and more interest uh, from Israel. Um, so yeah, we're we're pretty excited to see those kinds of developments and uh, yeah. All right, I'll remember to turn my video on. Uh, so I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. A few years ago, I I worked with a with a group that uh, for Micro Mouse, which is an IEEE uh, sponsored competition, and and uh, one of the one of the teams did had a really good design, except the except the stepper motors and the stepper motors had a problem with the reliability. So when you when you mentioned stepper motors, have you had any issues there with uh, with uh, just overtaxing them? That was their issue. It was, they, they were just overstressing. Yeah. Uh, so we we used uh, a four nine nine five stepper drivers um in a, in our previous versions and we just had uh so many um reliability problems uh with uh with with older models of farm bots um but our newest models the farm bot version 1.6 um we have fully integrated the drivers and uh, i the, the name of the driver just eludes me for if you just Hang on a second. I uh, I can tell you exactly which ones we we use. Just give me a second here. Well, while you're looking, I'll I'll point out that I don't see any other questions in the chat. So if you have any questions, uh, type them in now. Trinamic, sorry. Yeah, okay. So um the uh the current model of Farmduino uses an integrated trinamic TMC2130 stepper drivers. And these stepper drivers have proven themselves in, in very challenging environments, and they just are awesome. They are such an improvement over the the Genesis version 1.4 models that we we had. Um, not only do they, are they fully integrated and uh, super reliable, um, they also have allowed us to use a ultra quiet mode. And so basically, uh, with these new Trinamic drivers, um, the the Farmbot went from a very noisy machine to a very quiet machine so um you can set it to quiet mode and basically uh if you're not paying attention you probably wouldn't notice that the farm bot is actually moving around and operating um, and if you go to our youtube channel you can see the difference between uh regular operation and quiet mode operation um and so yeah it's uh it's actually pretty cool to see that so anyway it's trying they're trinamic drivers and we use nema 17 stepper motors with uh, um rotary encoders and with the combination of these new trinamic stepper drivers and rotary encoders um we have been able to get the reliability to be quite good all right good a uh, question from uh, Anish: uh, Can you speak a little more about the capabilities of the software? Uh, what what all can users do with it? Um, okay, um, yeah. Uh, so the the software uh, basically uh, automates uh, the gardening functions. Um, um, do, uh, do you mind if I share my screen? 
Is that oh, okay? Yeah. Can I? Well, let me just go ahead. You should be able okay. to do um, that. Let me stop sharing. Share. Okay, just give me a second here. Sure. Okay. And then I'm going to share my screen. Share. Okay. Can can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the FarmBot environment, um, and uh, so this is actually my FarmBot in uh, in uh, just outside my house, and so um, so on. Uh, so if you go into the um, the map, uh, you can see uh, uh, that I have a number of lettuce plants growing, and um, I uh, I also have some uh, some herbs, and then some pepper plants, and then over on the right hand side, I've got uh, a, a few tomatoes, and of course, I've done the same thing that uh, that Captain Mel did. She put her tomatoes at the very end, and that's that's exactly what I've done. Uh, and then, so behind, so these are, I don't know if you can see that, but these are the, uh, the specific plants that I have. And, and so you can go in and you can see, um, what, uh, the, the plants and then, uh, the X, Y coordinates of the, each plant. And then you can also, uh, select different, I don't have anything selected in here, but you can select water spread and uh height and uh and then uh so you can also go and do weeding i i haven't done specific weeding actions on my garden uh because it's not big enough and we we uh we put in some pretty good uh mulch and so it's just uh we we don't have that many weeds to begin with uh and then uh in here we have watering curves um, and so if you, if you are managing several plants and you want to be super specific about, uh, the water dosage that you want to administer to your plant, uh, you, you can select a specific watering curve. Let me just, uh, yeah. And so this is, this is, uh, this is an example curve, um, and we ha we're developing um, a, a curve for each uh, plant type. Um, uh, let me just go back to the plants here for a second. So if you want to add a plant, you uh, click add plant. And then um, let's say you want to add a beet. So you type in beet. And then um, on the left-hand side, we give you an option for a number of different types of beets. And so you can select um, uh, the beet that you want to plant. So I'm gonna select uh, this beet over here. And then, um, so then you, you take uh, your beet and then you drag it and drop it onto the map where you want to plant the beet. Let's say we wanna plant it right there. And so there is the new beet plant right there. And so if you go back into the garden, there's the beet that we just added. So, um, and then you can specify different data. I'm just going to delete that because that I want to keep my garden just a little bit organized. Um, yes. Okay. So I deleted that. Uh, and then over here, this is the sequence editor. So this is where you get into the uh, the nuts and bolts of the, the programming of the farm bot. And so I'm just going to start a new sequence. Um, and so, for example, what we'll what we'll do here is we will uh, move the farm bot to a specific location. So you go in here and you type in your custom coordinates. Uh, let's say we want to go to, uh, so we'll go to the home position first, zero, zero, zero. And then we will, um, 
then we'll move. Uh, then we'll do move to another location. So let's say we want to move to um, a specific plant. We will select uh, the first lettuce plant right there. And then um, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll take a photo. Uh, and then we will get it uh, to move back to the home position. Custom coordinates, zero, zero, zero. And, uh, and so it's, it's a pretty easy programming environment. It's, it's a drag and drop. And you have a number of different uh, commands that you can that you can do. Um, I'll uh, also before we take the photo, I'll just add. Oops. Go. So we will let's do the lighting. Oh, hang on. Just lighting digital mode to on. And then after that, we take the photo, you will lighting digital mode off. So in this uh, in this example sequence, we'll go to home. Then we'll move to the lettuce plant, and then we will turn on the light. We'll take a photo, turn off the light, and then move back to home. And so I'll, I will save this. And then once it has saved, then you can run the sequence. And we will run the sequence. And so we will go over and just see um, let's see what, what's going on. So there it is. The farm bot has moved over to the lettuce plant. It's turned on the lights. And now it's taken the photo. And oh, it's, uh, <laughs> I guess we didn't provide quite enough light. Uh, but that that is the uh, the photo that uh, we took it's uh, it's pretty dark outside right now where i'm at so um it doesn't quite pro provide quite enough um light for the photo but uh but that's that's it in a nutshell so that's the uh the sequences um and then um uh, and then you can um do a regimen so if you um if you want certain actions to be taken um in in a uh, sequence you can you can add it to a regimen you can also add farm events uh so um th this is this is what i currently have on the uh on the event so basically 9 a.m every morning it waters all plants um you can uh take uh soil moisture sensor readings you can do tool verifications you can take photos. So this is the the photo that we took. But let me show you some of the other photos that we have uh, taken. So these are different photos of the plants in my garden. And uh, some people take a lot of photos. Um, these are the tools. So we've got the cedar tool, the seed bin, seed tray, watering tool, uh, soil sensor, weeder, um, and uh, and they're all located just on this side of the farm bot. Um, and then over here is the message center. And uh, so you can see if there's uh, software updates, you can um, get information about uh, different software updates that we've done and or actions that may need to be taken um, in, in the farm bot. And then uh, we have a whole section on our software documentation that allows people to easily look up um, information from our open source documentation. Uh, and then over here we have settings, so you can um, you can uh, look at various settings in the software. So 
um, there's the axis, so you can find home, uh, find length, uh, you can set the axis length in here, uh, you can uh, take control of various motor settings, encoder settings, um, custom settings, uh, and then, of course, we have a link to our shop. And um, and that that's that's basically without getting into too much more detail that this is the the basic farm bot environment. That is cool. That's I can tell you have a lot. Of, somebody's put a lot of thought into this. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So we have uh, we have two developers, and we have a front end developer and a back end developer, and we have uh, hardware engineers and. Uh, I'm the sales guy. Rory is kind of the uh, planning and production uh, guy, and uh, yeah, so we're 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 pretty excited about uh, our technology, and it's pretty cool. Like you do have to admit, it is it is pretty neat. I I really like it anyway. But uh, yeah, are there any other questions? Uh, there is one one more uh, from uh, Paul. Uh, are there any farm bot enthusiasts in the Silicon Valley area that I could visit to see a system in operation? Yes, yes, of course. Um, I yes. Think so, uh, email would be the best way to set that up. Um, yeah, yeah. If you want to send me an email, uh, we'd be we'd be more than happy to show you. So we're we're located in San Luis Obispo, California. And on rare occasions, we do have customers come to our warehouse and uh, take a look at the, the existing farm bots uh, that we have available. Uh, and they're, they can be invited um, to, uh, to come and take a look. Uh, there are several public farm bots in around California. Um, so there is one at the Palo Alto Library, and uh, that one is open to the public. Um, although you, in order to access the software, get a tour of the farm bot, you do have to speak with, uh, certain people at the Palo Alto library. There are also, um, uh, a few farm bots that are, uh, publicly available in Riverside, California, and also at, uh, at, uh, UC Berkeley, um, there's, uh, there's the art garden that also uses the farm bot uh, for demonstration purposes. All right, um, that was the uh, last question. So thank you very much. Uh, okay. Excellent presentation, and 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 thanks thanks for the uh, the Q and A too. Great uh, great interaction there. Okay, Go great. On. Thank you very much for letting us present our technology. We're very happy to be able to present to you guys, and uh, we really are appreciative of the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right, take care. All right. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.